My name is Dr. Sakati Sierra. In 1990, I graduated high school. I was very confused, seeking the truth about all these chaotic religions. When I got in contact with the Ansarlar community, I read my first book, Could Jesus Transform Himself? Then the master teacher, known to us as Imam Misa, brought me to an uplifted state. I seen everything much clearer. I joined the Ansarlar community in 1991 and became a young disciple of the Lamb where I walked with the Lamb and have gone through all the different many religious schools of thought. Now, in 1996, I'm an owner as well as an operator of a Holy Tabernacle bookstore in Sparta, Georgia. In just six years, I've been lifted to such an elevated state that no other teacher could take me in my day and time. Now I'd like to give you a chance to hear the true teachings of the most profound teacher of this day and time, Dr. Malachi G. York. Yes, I have a question, Dr. Malakazi. I went to the Nation of Islam Temple and uh, I was asking them questions about the Holy Tablets. And they, they threatened me and they kicked me out. Is there any other way that I could reach them with this information or another approach? The Nation of Islam, because of the Holy Tablets and Al Quran, they got to come home. Because the bottom line is they cannot explain why. Minister Louis Farrakhan, nor the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, nor any of the other ministers, including Warabi the Muhammad, who was fluent in Arabic, according to them, or Master Fra Muhammad is using the Ahmadiyya Quran. They can't explain why God is standing there with an Ahmadiyya Quran in his hand by Ghulama Ahmed, who, in, who himself considered himself the Mahdi and the Messiah. They use the Ahmadiyya Quran. Malala Muhammad Ali, is, it belongs to a specific sect that comes out of whole Pakistan. They can't tell me why God is standing there with Ahmadiyya Quran in his hand when God is supposed to be the one to reveal the Quran to Muhammad. He should have the original tablet in his hand or, or at least a copy that is perfect before they burnt it or before they and them rewrote it. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of Ahmadiyya Quran, look at it like this here. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's name was originally Ghulam Bogan. And the man who was the spirit behind the Ahmadiyya movement, his name is Ghulam or Ahmed. You think this is a coincidence? No. But in the history of the nation of Islam, they don't tell people about how the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was once a member of the Ahmadiyya or influenced by the Ahmadiyya. And that's the result of that guy, Dr. Abdullah Muhammad, who his son, Wafdi Muhammad, is now trying to pass off as Wallace Dodd Ford or W.D. Farad or W.F. Muhammad. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad changed his name several times. When they speak about me changing my name, his name was Robert Poole, Elijah, his name was uh, Ghulam Bogan, his name was Kareem, and then he became the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, then Messenger Elijah Muhammad. They have changed their names also because as you progress and you learn or you move forward in schools, you automatically move up the ladder. You follow? So, you know, when you got that kind of right knowledge, you don't have to attack them. You don't have to do it. They are finding their way to the Holy Tablet. You ain't got to do it. And that, of course, they're going to get mad because if the shoe was on the other foot, how would you feel? I think I explained this to somebody before. If you, if you belong to a, a boxing team, and let's say you guys, this here is a whole camp to train boxing. Correct? You understand? And then we have another team over here, we train boxers. Now, you go to the fight with your boxer after y'all have trained him, he's in perfect shape, he tells you all the stuff he's going to do, the rights he's going to use, straight, the hooks, the uppercuts, he has all figured out. You understand? And he goes there, and he gets knocked out in the first round, the first couple of minutes. On the way back to the camp, how does that, how do y'all feel? Your chance. Y'all trained him. He was in the ring sparring, knocking people down and punching the bag and brrrr, and running around and everybody's he's looking real good. You realize we know he's going to knock the opponent out. Now this is your camp, right? And y'all get in and y'all go to the fight. Y'all got the front row. Y'all ready. Y'all cheering. Y'all all ready. And the finger bell goes bang. He runs out. The guy goes bam and knocks him unconscious. What kind of conversation do y'all have on the way home? Huh? How do you feel? Now suppose on the road home, we just happened to pass your car and our car, and the champ who knocked your man out was in this car, and you're looking out the window and I go, hey! 
We knocked y'all out, huh? How do you feel? How angry would you be at me? Alright, y'all guys are on the winning team. We are knocking niggas out. And now you're going over there and rubbing them and teasing them. Nah, 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 we not proud. And you want to know why they want to be tough. You feel what I'm saying? See, you guys got that gleam in your eye now, because of the right knowledge. Like, way, way back in the Ansar day, we used to have that gleam because nobody could deal with us as Ansar. And we love that gleam. We, a conversation, man. I mean, we'd rather debate with you than to sell a book. And we say, you want to argue? <laughs> and you're all day out there on Fulton Street or, or 42nd Street, right? That's that, y'all now got that dream. So I remember when we first came down here and we was first making the transition to the higher degrees here, right? From Ansar Law, which is Islamism or Muhammadism, on up to right knowledge. And y'all was a little bewildered. And I was saying, be patient. There'll be more books out than y'all have time to read. All these things y'all think is cloudy is going to be very clear, too clear. And you're going to have no competition. But y'all have to look like I'm in class and I'm watching class. People ask questions going, I don't know. I don't know. Y'all couldn't answer the question. Y'all didn't have this look. Now that y'all got your own Quran, you got the whole holy tablet, you got a reference to go back to. You know what I'm saying? You got a whole series of books, and then every one of those little questions you had last year is somewhere answered inside one of the books. And sometimes you're thinking about something, and the book comes out. And it's just what you needed to hear. You know, does Dr. Melakaz York hide the faculty with Imam Mason? You're able to go, mm -hmm. <laughs> check that out. And they read that, and goes, bam, slap upside the head. That gleam is back in your eye because you got all this right knowledge. You don't have to be the aggressor. You all can just relax. Because Allah is going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because you're talking to Muslims. Allah is going to do the work when you're talking to Muslims. Yahweh is going to do the work when you're talking to evil Israelites. You know what I'm saying? I knew it was going to do the work when you talk to anybody who's talking about the Sumerian doctrine. Osiris is going to do the work for anybody who's talking about the Egyptian. The grand master of the universe is going to do the work if you're talking to Freemasons. Everybody's coming to your tables. Everybody, somebody from most every denomination. Of course, now think, of course that minister. And he's the guy in this boxing team who finances the fight and he hopes to benefit from the knockout so he can get more money. He's the minister of that congregation or that church. His followers got to go back to him and say, and say some, some nigga on the street calling himself the ATM, you know, ask me a question. I'm saying, you know, I, I don't doubt you or nothing. I'm with you all the way. You know what I mean? Minister or whatever, ex or Harry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got a lot of questions. I mean, you know, and I, I, I want to know about that, that, my friends, is that book, that holy tablet, you know, uh, is that the, is that the book the messenger talked about? No, that ain't the book. How the messenger? What's, what did he say? No, that is not the book the messenger talked about. Then the guy goes, uh huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He goes, man. I called to them. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad died in 1975, and this is how long from now? In 1996. How many years have passed? When is the book coming? If that's not the book, and they'll say, Would well, you know there's a whole story of Yaqub in here clearer than ever before? With the names and the people and the places and the migration, you know, they ask, you know, there's no such place as Kilon. It's not an island. It's a mountain peak and grotto in the Greek. And, you know, the mountain peak and everything they explain, what it, that's only the peak, you know, one group. There's another group of gravitation of red hair, green eyes. You know about that one? In, in the Yucatan by the Hopi. And they got me to say, ah, these guys are making it up. They're telling the stories about Yakub and here there's more detail than is in the message of the black man. In that book there. He got, now he had to got that from Allah Muhammad, who, had to, who, who supposedly got it from Master Prophet Muhammad. So either that man is Master Prophet Muhammad reincarnated, if I'm, because he's telling pieces of the story that he's there, or he got who he knew him, or something. But the guy who's talking to the minister has to always talk to the minister in a, you know, in a humble way. You know what I'm saying? He can't come up and say, you know, I got, you know, did you read the book, you know, minister? You can't do that. Because he'll get thrown out the temple. You know how the F -O -F, what do you call them? FOI work? You know how they work? They're in a bad state. You're not helping the situation. You don't have to worry about their congregation. Because the ministers ain't going to come over. That's their livelihood. They got to give up their livelihood and come sit up under you. They're not going to do it. Or me. They're not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? So what you got to do is let the doctrine do its own work. Your, I kept telling you, your example is the key. 
when they see changes in you. Because I'm caught the first problem you had was people saying, I thought y'all guys were supposed to be Muslims. You say, no, we're not. They're not. And then they, you know what the funny thing about it is? Now they're mad because we're not. When we were, they were saying we're not. When we was going out to the dance hall, they said, y'all ain't no Muslims, man. Y'all some kind of schism, y'all. So now we say, fine, we're not. How come y'all ain't Muslims no more? Whenever someone asks you that, you're supposed to say, I thought we weren't Muslims from the beginning, according to y'all. Don't go any further. Don't go into a long dialogue. Give, you know, it's a punch for punch thing. Because our thing is, we got so much information, we go, tick 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 We don't give enough time to find out how stupid or how smart the person is we're talking to sometimes. And then you spend an hour talking to a guy and he goes, oh. He realized, dumb, I waste a whole hour talking to this nigga. He didn't catch nothing I said. Sometimes it's best to throw the answer out right and then see what he says first, to see how his brain waves work. He say, I go, oh, well, don't y'all make slot anymore? Say, I thought y'all said we never made slot. Because we did it our own way. So how can we, how can we uh, be munafik How can we be hypocrites if we never were Muslim? So what are you talking about? Then wait to hear it. You know what I'm saying? You want to deal with the nation of Islam say, our problem has nothing to do with Farrakhan. We don't care about Farrakhan. Farrakhan's a nice brother. He thinks he's doing the right thing, but he's, but he's messing up because he's going against the government of the United States where he lives. You right. right. really like Libya that much? Move to Libya. Right. Right. Then why do you want to do it here? Farrakhan and a lot of these other guys, been over, they got too involved in the wrong thing. See, what happened is when people got involved in Islam, they had the wrong leadership. The purpose of a leader is to know where to take his flock. Right. Wise enough to know when to fold them, know when to hide. You know what I'm saying? You heard that before? A lot of these guys don't know when to fold and don't know when to hide. Farrakhan and them back in the 60s was all this old black crap. And Mr. Lewis and Farrakhan and them sitting up there in Malcolm X in the middle of Harlem playing black when actuality they wasn't even into the African thing. They were talking Asiatic. They were taking us towards Oriental. Asiatic takes you towards Orientals and takes you away from Africa. The nation of Islam has nothing good to say about Africa other than Africans are slaves. And in the 60s when everybody was wearing dashikis and akbaras and fooms and afros, the nation of Islam was clean shaven, sitting up there in bow ties and suits adding to the economy of the people that everybody was complaining about in the 60s, the whole so-called revolutionary mentality, and they're standing up there in American clothes, buying suits from the Americans, buying socks, shoes, bow ties, shirts, cufflinks, what have you. Am I right? Is this true or not? Right? And these guys are playing black today. Now they want to come back and talk Africa and try to make like they're with the black crowd, put together a million men march and play black with us. And they're not into black. The man they worship is a Caucasian. Ask them to show you a picture of him and you make decisions. Don't let them butter your mind up or soup you up with all the stuff about him being some black man or half original man. Look at the picture of the man. He is not one of us. Bottom line. And so we don't need to have all that stuff. We can't be living with that stuff today. Now, we've got to the point where we have, we went out of Africa, we went into this Islam. Everybody became Sunni, Shiite, Ahmadiyya, Baha'i, Ansar, 5%, gods, goddesses. Anymore? You know any new ones out there? Oh, the new Solomon guy. If I'm saying he was late, there's always one guy who comes after the gangs leave and he's got a gang uniform on, he's late. Now, most of the intelligent people have metamorphosized the way we did from the Afro pit. If I was straight on into Islam, and now on through Egyptology and further. Farrakhan don't know how to metamorphosize. If you go back to your old neighborhood, some of the people you hung out with are still there. Doing the same thing. If I went back to New York and Fulton, I'd find blood in them niggas still on the corner. They'll be still there. You know what I'm saying? You drive by and they be, and they hanging there going, still in my day, still do off and singing songs that go back to silhouette. You know what I'm saying? Or, or wind. You know what I'm saying? They don't know. They don't know the whole thing has changed. Well, what's wrong with the American Negroes that are, that are involved in Islam? They have the same problem. They joined the gang and they don't know that that gang lost and is still losing and it's time to come on back and get back on the boat of America and face reality that you were born here, you were raised here, and you really don't want to go there. Because, I mean, I remember we were ancestors, people say, want y'all go back to Sudan. That's the last thing we want to hear. We got to drop right back anywhere we're going. We want to pack all that bell stuff up and go on over there. The Sudanese like you so much, go on over there. We wasn't about leaving America, leaving Disney World and a hundred channels. <laughs> On television, you know what I'm saying? A multiple amount of restaurants of every kind of food and an educational system. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's going to leave this here. So, Brother Farrakhan is definitely one of our brothers. He's a little confused. You know what I'm saying? And he's, he's, and he's hanging out with the wrong crowd, like your grandmother says. 
when, when you come in your house and you got some friends, your grandma look at that girl and say, see that girl there? That's the wrong crowd. Don't bring her back here. That little girl over there, she's all right. That one over there, Shaniqua, Zuguana, don't bring her back in my house no more. I don't want you hanging out. You heard that before? Well, now I'm like a grandmother talking to all these leaders. Listen, fools. I was more Muslim than all y'all. None of y'all spoke the language. None of y'all knew anything about it. I was there. I'm telling y'all, get away from that girl there. Libby, she's crazy. Get away from them Saudi Arabia. They're crazy. Get away from that Islam. Give them. That's a bad person to hang out with in this day and time. Poor leadership. That's right. It's a problem. Leaders are tripping and they grab Islam and they don't know what else to grab onto. Because they really are not as intelligent as they say they are. Because I'm going to tell you about truth. When you use the word truth, it doesn't have any denomination affixed to it. You hear me? When I say truth, truth ain't got nothing to do with whether you're Christian, Jew, Muslim, Buddhist, Hare Krishna. Truth is, and that's why I said that when we was making that transition. Truth is truth. I was saying truth is not being Muslim. Truth is not being Christian. Truth is truth. If a Christian is talking to you, and I know you encountered this when you're out there, if a Christian is talking to you and they're speaking the truth, what do you do? Then you say, that's true. They say, well, I know that Jesus and them prostrated. You say, that's true. They prostrated before Muslims. So it ain't a Muslim prostration thing. It's a Christian prostration thing. Because the Bible, <laughs> I heard Muslims say, didn't Jesus prostrate in the Bible? We used to say that. A smart Christian would have said, yeah, Jesus was 2,000 years ago and Muhammad was 1,400 years ago. So prostration is a Christian thing that Muslims plagiarize. And we'd be going, we'd have to say, that's true. <laughs> Why? Because truth does not have any association with anything but, and truth manifests facts. Most leaders can't deal with truth. What makes us strong is we always told the truth about what we taught. It was always just the truth, plain, simple truth. You know what I'm saying? And so when we make a transition from Ansar into Nuwapo, as long as we tell the we ain't got nothing to worry about. People said, how, how come your, 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 men, your organization is growing? We're growing faster than we've ever. I know y'all know. I don't know if you know how fast we are growing. We're growing phenomenally fast all over the place. How could you do it? Because it wasn't about answer. It's because Imam Isa went before an audience and always said the same thing. Don't believe me. Check it out. Look it up. Because Imam Isa would do, do what I'm doing right in front of the business family here, but the outstanding in front of strangers and say, what do you want to know? I mean, you read our books? No, prove it wrong. And they couldn't. And I said, now on my way out of the school, of that degree, Islamism, Mohammedism, on my way out, I'm going to leave you a little something. I mean, it's called the 360 question. I'm going to leave you a little something so maybe y'all can get this stuff together, show you how weak it is. If you ain't bad, you think it's about dropping it in there. Y'all take this with you. I'm going over here to Egypt. I'm going back to home now. It's nice carrying here with you. You understand? But y'all get yourself together because you don't, you're not as bad as you think you are. You understand? You just got to have a shrewd mind to avoid the obvious question as an answer. What's the obvious question as an answer? How can you be a helper of the law? The law don't, have no, don't need no help. Now, I can answer questions to stick answers because I'm an answer. I was it. But you, they didn't have enough intelligence. They were too busy falling. How can you be a helper of Allah? No way. No way. Because <laughs> Allah is a summit. Right? right? But they never had enough sense to even ask me that question. If they asked me that question, you know what I would have had to do? Go, hmm. And if they asked it right and was enforced it and someone knew Arabic and they went and quoted the Quran and they kept it and I said, well, we say, yeah, you let it be in Quran and Sadr like that. That's, um, that says, Ila Hawar Yuna. That's Jesus' disciples. That ain't you. We had to go, hmm. You follow? Now, when I was Ansar and dissecting the Quran, what was, my, what was my biggest problem? As long as I was a Muslim reading the Quran like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Because I was reading the Quran. Yo, Imam, why don't you translate the Quran for us word by word? And I was like, sheesh, that's difficult. So my wife came in from Sudan, and she was an Arabic teacher. And I said, there's my encyclopedia and dictionary sitting right here next to me. You know what I'm saying? So we spent days and nights looking at every word. That girl right there used to help. Mubina, every little word. And I was like, take us. We must find the meaning of that word. Forget the religious connotation of it. 
You know, forget, forget what they say it means. What does the word Abd mean? And the word Abda meant slave, not servant. Kada meant servant. So we saw that and said, okay. Now why are these people saying uh, servant when they want to say slaves of Allah? It must be something else. See, right knowledge, Anunnaki versus Lulu Amalu tells you why Abd is there now. But they can't call themselves slaves. Because a slave is a worker. We know what the primitive worker means now. Okay. But as we went through it word by word, then I got I came across mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Was that you don't see when you're doing Tajweed or Tartil. That's the way they recite the Quran. That's done in a way to make you not see things. They created a grammatical structure after the Quran was already revealed to Muhammad. With, with letters and alterations, we talk about enough in our books, you know what I'm talking about, which makes it impossible for you to see the error. You know what I'm saying? Because you're so busy. If you say Bismillah, your Rahman, your Rahim, you never hear L. You never hear that A L in there. If you never act, if you look at the uh, Israeli airline, you see L Al, <laughs> the name of their airline. You might say L Al. What is that? But if you follow what they call it's Arabic grammar, you'd never see that. And they don't want you to ever see it. But as you start to dissect the book and take it apart, you find that 90% of the book is mistakes. Then you have another decision to make. Is this the real Quran? Because this is definitely not the one that says, This definitely ain't it. Where is the real Quran? Because this ain't it. Because it's got mistakes like that, that Allah would not make. I mean, Allah would never say the sun rises. Never. You couldn't make that mistake. Allah couldn't create, say, I created you from a male and female. Because that's determined after the creation. And now, what's real important is, when they look at the Quran, and they study the Quran, there's so many things that are not addressed. For instance, when they speak about this thing about creating a single male and female, the Quran forgets twins. That there are people on the planet that are born twins. Some are born triplets and quintuplets. Some people have six kids at one time. This is not addressed in the Quran. The creator of the boundless universe, the creator of every form of life, if you al Khaliku and Al-Alimu, the Noah, the creator, he would be addressing everything that takes place on the planet. And twins are not there identified in your Quran, but they are addressed in the Torah. When they speak about Jacob and Esau, and if the twins are addressed, but the Quran does not address twins in creation. And then they use the wrong word for male, zekr, which means to remember. And they didn't have a word for female in Arabic, so they used the word anthem, which means the, from the word it's mean the second one. Then the Almighty didn't know that there was a word, he, he, he revealed the Torah. And in the Torah they have the word ish and issue, male and female living being. But the Quran doesn't have it. The Quran uses Zekka wa Antar. Remember something and a second one. Allah doesn't know that. You start seeing that when you go, hmm. Because most of the time when you're talking to Americans, you don't bother reading Arabic when you're taking in class. You just read Arabic and then go to whatever, whatever translation you're using because it's easier to explain it. And we did that for years as answer. We didn't bother in the class taking each word and breaking it down. Too, it's too long. So I would open a Mawlana Muhammad Ali Quran or Yusuf Ali Law Piktol or a Shiite Quran, whatever. And, and as we got Qurans that were closer to the translation, I would say, oh, new Quran. I go out and buy a thousand Qurans and it's given to everybody. So we move into another found a Bible is better translated than King James. And the cut, that was a way of saying, some saying me, uh, Mel, one day you're going to have to translate these things because uh, they, you cannot stand there and say you're teaching the truth and you got a book that's not based on truth. It's got lies in it. You follow? This is where we are. Farrakhan and them guys are back in 1970 to us. They're still using the Ahmadiyya Quran. Sunnis are still you, you know, passing around English translations. None of these people, I look at the guys, how long you been Muslim? Five years. And you can't speak Arabic? So that wasn't one of your prayers. It's not important. It's not important in your word. And I ask you how long you been Muslim. I didn't ask you how long you been one of peace. The first word I used was Muslim. And I saw that. And I saw that eventually I'd have to do something about it. So we set out to translate it. When I saw Yahweh Ben Yahweh's Bible, I thought he had translated the Bible. They said Yahweh Ben Yahweh, you know, Yahweh Ben Yahweh have their own Bible. I was like, all right. 
I mean, that's, that's the kind of person I like that. All right. What happens? I go check the Bible. What do I find out? All he did is took the King James Bible, drew some sketch pictures in it, and had it rebound with some pictures in it. That's, that's it. And King James was Scottish, as you know, from the 360 questions that actually is like church. He put that in place. I said, how are you going to say Yahweh? How are you going to say you are God, the Son of God, and you're using a Scottish man's Bible? So the Israelite church caught that, so they turned King James black. <laughs> and anybody believe that crazy? I mean, amazingly, if you ask amazing, if King James black, they laugh. So we had to prove that King James was a Negro or a Jew. I don't know, they said he was a Jew, a, a Jew in Israel. I said, well, his, name, his name was King James. You give me one true Israelite who speaks Hebrew's name is James. And even in the Bible, they just name was Yaqub. They changed it to James, the book of James, Jesus' brother. You know what I'm saying? So I saw, I said, oh man, this is a long task. Not only do we got to translate the Quran, we got to also translate the Bible. So now the Torah is finished. And y'all be happy, you'll have a copy of that soon. And uh, Injil is finished. We have a copy of that soon. Finished, I mean. And right now I'm getting ready to make the last maybe, I don't know, maybe last 50, 60 chapters of the Psalms for the Zabor. Then I may go on to do the book of Barnabas. Uh, uh, Barnabas, they call it. You don't have to worry about the Sahaf. I'm quite sure you've realized by now the Sahaf is already inside the Holy Tablets. You don't got to worry about Al Hikmah because you realize Al Hikmah is already in there. So now we got to discover all the scriptures. What does that say to you? It says that you got the working tools to do the job. All you got to do is sit down now and digest. There was sabotage in the tablets by the printer. They actually changed words around in the, in the holy tablet you have in your hand. But it still can't conquer the information. And when we finish getting this one all distributed, we'll just go back to the time and print it ourselves. We use all the capital made from it to reprint a new version of it with all errors. But still, but the, but the content is still there. The little game they played didn't affect us. Didn't affect the meaning and it's definitely not affecting the power of the Holy Tablet. The Holy Tablet is out there kicking the butt. Again, my brother, you, 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 may, you may be more in tune with me than you know. I mean, really, spiritually in tune with me. You know why? I just left my office. You know, I'm writing an article called Dr. Melakai Z. York discusses Master Farah Muhammad. I'm working on this right this minute. Now that's kind of weird, isn't it? That, no, we, that we could be so far apart and yet you bring out the first question and you talk, talk, I'm working on it now. Why am I working on it? I'll explain to you why I'm working on it. Not because I want to slap them upside the head. Because they took kindness for weakness. They didn't know me. They didn't know that back then in Brooklyn, when we wrote that apology article, the sole purpose for the apology article was to stop an oncoming war between Ansar Allah and the nation of Islam. Because just like you said, you're tired of whooping you, you're thinking about retaliating. You know what I'm saying? When a nigga whoop you, stepping out of the car and punching him in his face. And then say, now, 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 you know that's how you get. And we took abuse as Ansars from the Sunnis, from the 5%, and all I kept telling the brothers, we have the truth. That's why they want to hit us. Because when a man swings at you physically, it's because he's been defeated mentally. He don't know how to handle us. They want to classify us as a religion, and I say, we're not religious. We're a fraternity and a sorority. That eliminates the possibilities of you ever being, being called a cult. Uh, they never called a Freemason, Knights of Columbus, Elves, none of them have ever called a cult. So you eliminate that when they say, what are y'all? What's your religion? We don't have a religion. We're a fraternity and a sorority. The elders had orders. And then they had sacred societies. The Essenes was an order. They call it the Essene order, not church, not a religion. Don't fall for the game. So when you fall in that game, you fall in the trap. The trap is you become classified as a cult and you must first define what you believe about God. Right? And then you're caught. They say, what do you believe about God? You say, I don't believe in God. Oh, so you're an atheist. You know what I'm saying? And you got to tell them, in order for me to be an atheist, I got to believe in God. I got to believe in theos to be an atheist. 
to be against theos, I gotta at first accept that there is a theos. So I can't be an a theos if I don't believe in it. But now they cornered us. So I saw a head-on war coming between us and the Nation of Islam in Brooklyn. And the kind of person I am, it wouldn't have took much. You know, you know what I'm saying? The kind of man I am as an individual, it wouldn't have took much before I would have said, let's go shoot them up and get it over. Let's go to, let's go to 7C before they come here. Because they're threatening us and threatening us. Yo, better not do this. Better not. My mind says, yo, don't threaten me. You know what I'm saying? Because the white man going to capitalize on both of our deaths. Because when we spray each other up and down on Bedford Avenue or Bushwick Avenue, the paramedics is going to be packing away bodies, a bunch of ambulance saying good. So to try to prevent a head-on collision, combined with a dream I had, when I, and I told them in a thing, a dream I had, Elijah Muhammad said this, right? And I said, basically what I'm telling y'all is, on the last page, I don't care whether he's W.D. Farrar, W.F. Muhammad, Wally D. Farrar, what do we care whether you want to worship, listen to this now, whether you want to worship a Caucasian, or you want to worship a light-skinned Arab who's really a Caucasian. Neither one of them are African. You ain't said nothing about Africa. So either way you go, y'all still Uncle Tom's. We say he's a Caucasian from Oregon, and y'all say he's a mulatto. And then you hide the word mulatto under the word Arab. And I say that because they say, according to the Nation of Islam, in their teachings, out of the Uncle Elijah Muhammad's own mouth, Master Fraud Muhammad's father was an Asiatic black man original, and his mother was a Russian. If you take a black man and a white woman and marry her, you do not get an Arabian, you get a mulatto. The word mulatto is an Arabic word. mu ledu, meaning one who was born of this birth. That's all. That's where it came from. It got through Latin to Spain, became mulatto with one T. And if you look in an Arabic dictionary, it says, when an Arab marries anybody who's other than an Arab, that's what a mulatto has. nothing to do with black and white in their dictionary. Look at the dictionary. So don't tell me that he's an Asiatic, that, that God is an original Asiatic black man, Farad, when he's a mulatto. Those kind of arguments that we present to them causes problems. So I said, I'll lay my pride aside. Because during that period of time, we had about 15 books out, kicking them in the butt. The one they grabbed was the message of the messengers right in the back. and said, see, he says right here, it's the message of the message right in the back. So if you believe the message of the message right in the back, how come he says Master Prophet Muhammad was a fraud? I didn't respond. My response is quite simple. I did not say the messages of the messenger is right and exact. I said the message of the messenger is right and exact. Meaning, go for self. Talk back to the congregation. I said, the part, I don't like mama teaching about go for self. I'm for that. That's right and exact. So that open forum on a million things. But if you tell me that Nubians had straight hair because they have straight eyebrows, and a guy named Daddy Shabazz cursed them and made their hair nappy when they was going into Africa so their hair don't get caught in the bushes, I say you sick, because old people's eyebrows get nappy. I know I'm an old man now, I'm 51, and my eyebrows are starting to become nine either when they were straight all my life. You ever, know, you ever notice old people get kinkier in the eyebrows? Start noticing old people, they get fuzzy eyebrows. So now explain that then. And we would, we would be able to do that in their question and answer forum which they invite the people because they have no choice because we're not there no more. See, the answers are gone, so everybody's inviting people to come. Before they wouldn't invite you, pop up in our white robe and kick your butt. So now they think we've gone, so they, they're taking chances. And when they take the chance, y'all go in there, kick them in the butt, what do they do? Get mad and want to beat you up. Threaten you. That was happening back then also. So I wrote the article in hopes that it would head off a collision. And Farrakhan was not smart enough to respond. You know what I'm saying? He didn't say a thing. So I said, okay, clown. What his followers did, better yet, is grab it and say, see, he don't know what Farad is. One minute he said Farad was two people, now he said he's, the one, he's one person. They went that route on me. And I was like, you niggas are so dumb, y'all can't see that I'm just doing this purposely just to give y'all some space. Because I was saying, as an Ansar Law community, what do we care about Farad and your bow ties and your bellboy uniforms? <laughs> what do we care? Y'all haven't even learned how to say assalamu alaikum yet. You're going, assalamu alaikum. You haven't even got the assalamu alaikum yet. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and, and what do I look like badgering you when I can spend my time trying to pull my brothers and sisters away from that white Jesus worship? So I left that right after that and I went into a whole series of Jesus books. Unbeknown to me, their lack of intelligence had them going around saying, See, I told you the answer, I never knew the truth about Farad anyway. I told you they don't know what they're talking about. You know, that's what they were doing. I'm going to say, <laughs> And I've been letting that get away all the way up until recently when Dr. Khalid, who's starving for power because he can't get the mosque on 116th Street that Conrad has, the brother who Farrakhan put in charge, and he's mad because he can't get that position, so he turns around the lecture and says, yeah, somebody says in a question and answer, oh, what about the, those guys in the cowboy clothes? First of all, what a lot of Nubians don't know is cowboy clothes are Nubian clothes. The Caucasians didn't have no cowboy clothes on when they came over here from Europe. They came over here with lace. Then look back at George Washington and them and see how they dressed. They came over here dressed in lace and little dainty clothes. They got the concept of cowboy clothes, cowboy boots, the hats from the Native Americans, the Indian Joe hat, and the Mexican sombrero, and the cowboy boots from the Mexican shoes. The whole concept of cowboy came from Nubians, people of color. It has nothing to do with the Amorites, so don't say it's wrong for a black man to put on cowboy clothes, because cowboy clothes belong it belongs to our Mexican or Mexican brothers, it belongs to our Native American brothers, and they are family. So we can wear cowboy clothes. I, and in reference to the brother, Dr. Khalid, I like the brother. The brother is, the, is more intelligent than Minister Louis Farrakhan because he has done his African research. Plus, the brother and me blend in complexion, first of all. We got a lot in common. He don't understand that they're not letting him up in authority because all the power elite in the nation of Islam are all light-skinned people. And it's always been that way. I'm surrounded by ex-members of the nation of Islam and they constantly tell me that it was always the high yellow or the light skin or the red bone of our brothers and sisters who are in the body. Don't realize Muhammad was light skinned. Master Farah Muhammad was white. And Minister Louis Farrakhan almost looks white. That's the way it works down there. The thing is, they're not going to let that brother in there as that pure African. He's a true Melanite. That's why he's so sharp. He's on the ball. He's angry. He's a lot of things. I love the brother even though the brother don't like me. The brothers welcome here in a family of people with a doctor that represents him where his complexion and him being himself is respected and his intelligence is respected. But there, he's always is going to be considered the opposite of what Parad looks like. But I love the brother. He's welcome amongst us. I don't care what he says about me. He's my brother. We will go down together against the enemy. But I'm not worshiping no white man with him. Or no half white man, no half Arab. I ain't following that. You've got to be African. What about those guys in the cowboy clothes going to call themselves HTM, you know, and their leader? He said, well, what's he? He says, you know, sarcastic. So what is he calling himself now? So I made sure I put in that book the, the amount of list of names that Master Frog Muhammad had in the uh, Edomite book. But I said, you know, he was just thinking, what is, he, what is he now? Is he Raboni or is he um, Imam Isa? Well, I know him as Imam Isa. He'll always be that to me. Say, wait a minute, chump. When I was saying I was Imam Isa, you always called me Dr. York, the disco singer. Now I'm calling myself Dr. York and y'all want me to be the Imam Isa. You know, you can't win with losing with these coons. Is that true? When I was saying, my name is Esau Al-Hadi Almighty, oh, you ain't no Sudan, you ain't linked to nobody, nigga. Your name is Dwight York, you from Boston, we know you. <laughs> so, you want that? Fine. Okay, now I'm Dwight York, now what? Is that going to give you any more ability to defeat me in a conversation because of my name change? See, oh, yeah. the concentration is on those little things. That shows you that they're defeat of violence. Because that's the best they can ride on. And you don't bother a guy when you ain't got nothing else to hold on to. A man who's sinking and uh, drowning, he'll grab onto a twig thinking it can save his life. Right. So he came off like that and I said, oh, he said, yeah. And he, one minute he said, Master Farman was two people. Another minute he said, Master Farman, one man. He didn't mention that on the back of that thing, I put four pictures of Farad, not the three. So what I did is I released a new picture of Master Frog Muhammad that nobody has ever seen before. And it's in the Edomite book. With him sitting between two white policemen open the book. The Frog Muhammad, they never seen it before. Nobody in the nation of Islam from 1930 all the way up to this year has ever seen that picture before. Only other person who has that picture is a brother called Cuba, and I sent it to him. A 5%. You understand? I sent it to Prince Cuba myself. 
when he was, but he first he was using our doc. He had a book called Adam and something. Then he switched back to that five percent stuff. And I said, he said, if you know the real fraud, send me another. But I sent him to, to him while he was in prison because I figured he couldn't use it. Nigga printed a book in prison. <laughs> I said, some got you, got you. Now when you present the new picture of fraud. I said, now this man is the guy right there that I show you with the ruffle hair getting arrested. Which one is he? And which one was with Noble Juali? The problem is, when I said these two guys are the same, they forgot that in our books we explained that one walked with Noble Juali before they went to the Nation of Islam, and he was the real Arab, and I repeat, the one that walked with Prophet Noble Juali was called in his own book, Fraud. Right in his own book. The real one. His name is Fahd Abdul Ali Muhammad. Spelled with an M-O-H-A-M-M-E-D. That's F-U-A-D. The Turkish way or the Palestinian way of saying Fahd. Right? This is the real one. He was born in 1891 and was eliminated in the prisons in California in 1929 to be exact. He was in, in Chicago, and there are pictures of him there, standing in the crowd with Noble Juali's followers. Somebody's playing tricks on y'all, but you don't want to learn the truth. You like living a lie. You like following this man, this Caucasian, parading around as one of us, and get mad at me, your brother, for trying to tell you the truth. Why? Because you don't want to know the truth? That's as bad as when you approach a Christian and he has a white Jesus on the cross and you get mad because you can't convince him that that white Jesus ain't his God. And the way you feel about that is the same way we people at HTM, am I right? You think that the Holy Spirit after ministry here when we're trying to tell y'all that the guy that y'all are talking about is white. And you look at him, you see a white man. Y'all keep on persisting that he's some black man or some half black man and stuff. It's not real. It's not real, y'all. Wake up. Let me ask. The real Arab would know his own name. He wouldn't be Fahd one day, Fahd another day, Fajr another day, Fahd another day, Farad another day, Farid another day, Wali one another day, Wallace Dog one day, WD Fahd another day, WF Muhammad another day, Master Farad Muhammad one day, Muhammad Abdul Ali Farad. He wouldn't have been all of these different things. A real Arab would know. Because in Arabic, your name would be Farad, which is the Saudi Arabian way of saying Farid, which means unique. Now, in Saudi Arabia, the nearest thing to F-A-R-A-D is Fahd, like King Fahd, who became king in 1926. Right? And that has an H in it. It's not Fahd, it's Fahd. Fahd. And it means a link, an animal, a beast of prey. And that's the nearest thing in Saudi Arabian dialect to Fahd. You follow that? I'm quite sure Allah wouldn't have called himself a cat, a beast of prey. So he ain't that. Then in the message of the black man on page 141, write it down. Elijah Muhammad goes to explain why God is called Fahd. This is the article I'm doing right now, that's why I'm talking to you about it. Right? Then he says, because in Islam, you have what's called Fahd, which is obligatory. That's a different word. That doesn't have a del on the end. That has a dodge on the end. And it's written with a D-H or a Z if any Arab translates it. He would never write it F-A-R-D. He would write it F-A-R-Z or F-A-R-D-A. Fahd. That's not Fahd. That's Fahd. It's another word. So then he leaves in that same section says, because he was the early morning. The dawn. Now he puts it in the same book. That's not Fahd. That's Fajr. <laughs> that ends with a J. <laughs> it's another whole word name. And the root name of the word Fajr, if you write Fa Alif Raja, it means wickedness. Look it up. Fajr. The way Americans say Salatu Fajr, it means wickedness. Go look it in the Arabic dictionary. I'm quite sure he would not have called himself wickedness. There is no such thing as the island of Pelon, P-E-L-A-N. There's no such thing. It's Pelion. And it's not an island. It's a mountain. And this is in the message of the black man. A book inspired by God. God would know 
said there's no island called, called Pilon. It's called Pilon, and Patmos is beneath it. it. Has nothing to do with the cave of Braca. The relationship to God and the devil there comes because in Greek mythology they say the centaurus lives there, which is part man and part animal, which is where they get the symbol of the Mendes. The Mendes symbol, which we show you, symbol like this, the Satan with the half man body. And that's why whoever the Masons gave him that was giving him the symbolism of the goat of Mendes symbol, of the pentagram. That's what they was telling them, but it was all Freemasonry. By the time it got out of Noble Dwali's hands was a Freemason, which I'm quite sure I've made clear to you all in that book with the pictures, the feathers, and the, and the head of the temple had Sultan Lodge right on his hat. <laughs> Something they can't disprove because I work with pictures. I mean, they like to work with mouth. I just go find an article. That's why they give me this article. Because if I say Farrakhan, I'm going, I'm going bankrupt. He need that billion dollars. Then I'll Farrakhan, he just bought new land. <laughs> you see this cooked up in the newspaper. You go, really? Talk to me. Because I'm dealing with facts. I ain't got no time for that crap. We've been being fed crap for too many hundreds of years. Right now, we need facts. We ain't dealing with no facts. We, I'm, that's me. I ain't got you. I've been missing my whole life. I think it's like, you got no facts. Leave me alone. You understand? Don't tell me that's ketchup and it looks like mustard. <laughs> so don't, in other words, don't tell me that man is black and he looks like he's white. And you can't tell me by looking at that man that he's black or half black, but he's not one of us. He's not a melanite child. He's not a child of the sun. And this is very important too. Ask them to produce other pictures other than some side shot so you can look directly in his face and see his features. That's why they have to deny the pictures that the government has that proves that that was a Caucasian. Because when you look at those pictures, you can't pass him off looking at his lips and his nose and his facial structure. You can't pass him off at has no Arab or no Indian, he is a Caucasian. So they had to actually reject their own savior because the government had got pictures of him when they arrested him. They admit in their teachings that Master Farad Muhammad was arrested. If Master Farad Muhammad was arrested, the government took mug shots of him and they have him on file and fingerprints and blood type. He has A blood, which is Caucasian blood, not O blood, which is Nubian blood. They have his fingerprints and they match the fingerprints to the man who they admit was arrested and that's the front shot of him that's in our books and the shot sitting down with the two Caucasians reading a book and that's the same man that man shall ask them produce more pictures of him then send out more pictures put out some side shots put a picture of him and Honorable Elijah Muhammad sitting together walking or sitting together or walking and talking together or at a dinner together or at the temple send us pictures of him standing up in front of the congregation you got one picture and it's a side mantelpiece picture holding a book and that's your foundation for his nationality and that's the picture I direct my love and my prayers and my worship saying all praise is due to Master Prophet Muhammad who came in person for a lot and I'm supposed to base it on a side shot of a photo taken back in 1930 you say it ain't real ask them to produce as many pictures of Farad as they have on the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because they have many pictures of Honorable Elijah from all different kind of angles sitting in the congregation teaching from the pulpit personal walking down the street all kind of shots you can find them produce some more pictures of Master Farad Muhammad the only pictures that have come out are the ones that Sheikh Daoud gave me that I feel obligated to pass on that's it and the ones that the government passed on to Sheikh Dao because he was out there in Chicago working against Farad, the phony one, which is Wallace Dodd Ford, and he got research done and information to put these pictures in the public. That's all. I asked them to produce more pictures. I'm not following no half original. I'm not following nobody who's mixed, deluded, and tampered who ain't holy, El Qudus. I'm not following that with you, so don't get mad at me because I keep trying to stress that that man is not one of us because point blank, if he was one of us, you wouldn't have to explain how he's half this and who mixed him with that. I'd be able to look at him and see. I might have no problem looking at Dr. Khalid asking if Dr. Khalid one of us. It's real obvious that Dr. Khalid is one of us. I have my doubts about some of the other people in their leadership, but Dr. Khalid is a Nubian 100% of God in the flesh. That's it for me. I worship him before I worship some half of him. So, again, to deal with them on those level, let me do my job. They're having so much going on with them. This new guy, Solomon, couldn't kill everybody and Silas. He said he was going to join Farrakhan and turn around and call Farrakhan a hypocrite. And, I mean, they, are, I mean they, they got problems. Just like I said about the Amorite in the beginning of this year, just step out the way, leave him alone. I guarantee you, they're going to come to your class. And then you say, our teacher told us we should not debate with y'all. 
because y'all are still Muslims. You know what I'm saying? And the answer is, can a Muslim be fool? Yes, nowadays. Before, when we was Muslims, we were saying, not nowadays. Now that we ain't Muslim, the answer is simple, yes, nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So let it happen quick. I have a question. Someone in class asked me that before you taught us about Master Farad Muhammad being from Venus, now you're explaining to us about a third Farad. I really don't know how to answer that question. I'd like to know if possible, can you expound upon it? When they say Venerian, that's a real good question too. Someone asked me about it before. Valiant Thor and these guys can be born here and be a Venerian. Now there are Martians. Let me talk about that. When I said there was life on Mars, nobody believed me. But I, and I told y'all right after that, I said, but when Wahe says it, then niggas don't believe me. Now, it's general consensus that there is life on Mars. Fortunately for you, the holy tablet was out before they made the public statement, so you can flip right there and say, he told us that before the government approved it. There are people being born here and transported there. They've been living there and breeding there. So if they live and breathe there and they come here, in other words, if I am from... Where are you from? Uh, where are you from? Where are you from? Who were you born? Antigua. Okay. Now, if you have a son born here, he's an American. Right? right. right? Now, if his, if his wife is from Antigua, and you're from Antigua by, by blood, by nationality, by reality, he is Antiguan. But he's born here, he's a American. Those, that that's why I pointed out his complexion is like a Hindu for you. If also, when I speak about them, I did mention in the book to you that notice that Valiant, don't think Valiant Thor is a European. He's Hindu. Now, who controls the Kingu project? In the Holy Chapel. Where'd they come from? Where's Nineveh? What planet were they on when they got kicked off to go here? They was on Sin, which is another name for the moon. You follow that? That's where they made their base from Venus. And the, the government right now has moon projects. Right. They're finding faces on the moon just like they found on Mars. Right. Where you know that the Anunnaki did all their clone. That was a form of Shimsi before they came to Earth. Again, if the United States is no longer a war with Russia, what is the purpose of a shuttle? What does a shuttle do? Right. Take people from one place to the next. So why do they keep calling these things and sending up shuttles if nobody's being transported? They're saying now people are going to be there stay for six months. They're transporting them to the mine team. They have one on Mars, they have one on Venus. And they, they, like I told you last year, they exploded Jupiter and they reactivated Jupiter. And it'll be in the news soon, they'll be talking about Jupiter. Right. So anything I tell you all comes true. Right. I'm going to go If you don't believe me, sometimes some of the things I tell you all sound so far fetched, you're all afraid to go teach them. See, yeah, man, this is this, this, wow. <laughs> How am I going to tell my mother this one? But then when it hits the news, you go run into our <laughs> You go, man, man, government said life on Mars. Now what? Now you with me. Be with me even when it sounds crazy. Because you don't confirm yourself. <laughs> the answer to your question is yes. Yes, the third one's the Venerian. The government placed him. He worked with Hitler. And Hitler was, remember I told you a long time ago that he was part of the Nazi party. The father was a part of the old doctrine. The Nazi party is the third right, which is the Venerian and the Pleiadian project. Please. Yes. You made a statement. You said the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a gray? Yeah, he's part gray. He's part of a breed. When, when he's brown skin. I explained that also in the book. You gotta watch your guys gotta read. When you see one with a brown skin, you know that the grays have bred into them. You, you follow? He's not a part of the sea of the Maldikians transported here by the dolphin. Dolphin was, was really called hook. That's not what he is. He's from here, abduction and bred and planted. To work with the Venetian. It always works like that. And they follow, and right here in San Francisco, Georgia. You know Georgia was a hot spot. They got a whole city gray named after them, where they had the graves. And they used to bring them straight to on, on Eisenhower Boulevard, who's the one responsible for bringing them in. They got this thing laid out. That's why uh, you cannot... Anybody, anybody here from, from uh, Macon? Anybody ever live in Macon? Yeah. What does Macon smell like at night? You know what it smells like? It smells like chemicals and species. That's because that's where they're under it, is where they're feeding graves. Chemicals, dead bodies. If you go to Macon tonight, I don't care, you'll smell it. 
Yeah, and that's what they were doing that until they transferred them to Puerto Rico for another project. I'm going to tell you about that. Why is it that about, I tell you all now, they transferred them to Puerto Rico. Six months later, we got Chupacabra. Where it happened? How did it happen? How, how we know? Because we was told they're now transporting, I tell you, I said, the brothers told me, they're now transporting the grain, so they're multiplying too fast over to Puerto Rico, and some of them even being mixed with reptilians. Right? And boom, out of the water comes Chupacabra. Yes. I have a question. I teach class, and someone had asked about the reptilians in Texas. Are they the new ones? The re reptilian base? Well, it's supposed to be the reptilians eating livestock. Oh, that's the same one. That's chup is it chupacabra or chupacabra? Do I speak Nobody speaks Spanish? Uh, it's chupacabra. That's the same one. The government brought them here. Puerto Rico was saying, you came over here and you got you bred some of these things and they got out, but they always escaped. That's what um, Arrival is. You ever see the movie Arrival? Okay. If you see the movie Arrival, you, you see how those legs bend back on those creatures? All right. Remember that big disc? The largest satellite disc on the planet is in Puerto Rico. That's where they were going. Notice the men were all Spanish speaking. The, 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 the clones. They, they, they had the movie out like they did with the other one with the, the disease, Ebola. They called it, what do they call that movie? Outbreak. They had the movie out while, before the incident <laughs> broke out. They made a mistake. Well, Chupacabra was transported from Puerto Rico here, and it's in Texas, and it's in northern Georgia. And the killer bees are coming this year. I told you all, expect them. They're coming. They're all over the news now. When you see a bee, slap it. Go ahead. Uh, there's an article in Newsweek magazine that uh, spoke about Bill Gates, uh, who's uh, they refer to in the computer world as the Antichrist. Do you have any information on him? When Reagan was the president, Ronald Wilson Reagan was the Antichrist. When Pope Paul VI was the Pope, he was the Antichrist. The vicar translates in Latin to be Antichrist. Everybody wants to answer. You read the Epistles of John, the brother of Jesus. When he speaks about the Antichrist, he says right there, they are already here. If I'm trying to say, this stuff that people are looking for, the Muslims are saying, Masjid al-Dajjal. Masjid al-Dajjal is King Fahd. Right now, every, every description Islam gave about them, blind in one eye, tanks under the ground in Saudi Arabia, the military has got their biggest tank. What's the, what's the word tank in Arabic? The bad. And if you say the bad middle ard, you're saying tanks to come out from under the earth. Saudi Arabia right now, the Wahhabi sect is a law. It's Muslim. Islam is the devil's religion. They are the terrorism. They are here to terrorize the world. They are Satan's children, working for Satan. Every place they are, there's chaos. That's why I said that was a good place for us to hide. When I said when I came on the scene to teach. I said, I had to go somewhere where I could be, I can hide. Because in Islam, you're protected. You know how you know it? Go to jail. Right. And as soon as you become a Muslim, you're protected. In the Muslim world, you have this kind of protection because they're tyrants. They're devils in disguise. The they worship the ground. See, Islam is reversed to logic. Islam says, Allah is somewhere. Can you pray like this? A lot is there, and they pray like this. They say, we get up and make fudge, right? Which is the dawn. But, it's got to be before the sun rises. They, they ignore the word salah, which really means the daybreak. And introduce a new word, fudge, for salah. It should be salah to fudge. But they say, no, fudge is the darkest point of night. But the chapter, the Quran translates, every translated is daybreak. And not the darkest point of night. They say man was created from clay. No, man was created from water. No, man was Allah created everything in six days and then he went on his throne. No, Allah merely said kum fayakum and things. I mean it's consistent. If all that, Jesus is not a God. Right? Jesus is the word of Allah and the soul of Allah. Jesus is not a God. But he's the word of Allah and the soul or spirit of Allah. But the first, it, it's a, it a spell-binding process. The information does not agree with anything. It doesn't make no sense when you really analyze it. It's what made us the Bible so we were answer. We had a doctrine that had been deciphered by the Muslims. And we were different from them. As we fell under the umbrella of their ideas and their privilege, 
destiny. You're talking to them, you're talking to somebody who's a spell to be a dance so deep, they got some vision in a way that you cannot believe. Everything they taught is the opposite. They made prayer at sunset. Right? Which is, which is the end of the day. And the word they use is Maghrib, which is the West. Salatul Maghrib. The West, which also is a word meaning a raven, a symbol in Islam of evil. You get the point? Everything about it is shaitanic. It is the devil's religion. It's not what Muhammad taught. Muhammad was a Freemason. You understand that? Muhammad was taught by a Christian minister who was also a Freemason, a Jesuit priest. And the Jesuit priests, the Jesuits are your right Freemasons. They go up a certain path, which I won't discuss, because y'all are Wednesday, not Tuesday, because I can't give y'all secrets. But the Jesuit priests, they're a different group. Muhammad belonged to it. Ali belonged to it. Hassan and Hussein was killed because they wouldn't reveal the secret, just like Hiram Piff was killed. Because he wouldn't give the secret. Or Hiram Abi, his name is really. Yes? The island of what? Okay, good. Because everybody says Monroe. Yes, it's Monroe. Go ahead. French. Did you see the movie? Anybody saw it? What's the first word when you get to the island that you see on the screen? Very important, because that's in our doctrine. Java. It says Java. That's Javan, Jephthah's son, who married Iris the Hittite, who bred the Idonians of Greece. Another word for Edomite, Edonian. See the game? There's more to the movie than meets the eye. Go ahead. I didn't see it at Nightmare Hall. I went to this movie because I assumed I'd be asked questions about it. <laughs> If it's similar to the place that I mean, I thought I thought it was a movie. Um, no, this is this is more like the gravitation that took place on the Yucatan by the Hopis or the Irish, the red hair green eyes, or the gravitation that took place right with the cloning for the Caucasians with the blonde hair, blue eyes, and it, it went with dogs and stuff. It has nothing to do. With it. But Independence Day takes you down into Area 51. Have you saw the movie? They only call it 51 because it has 51 levels. That's why it's called Area 51. But they've moved everything out of here now because too many people have been coming over there. And they've, reached, they've placed them all over the place. Sometimes I want a complete question because I, you know me, I'm a motor mouth. I think you want one thing and I start talking about a whole other subject. You'll never get your answer. You'll be like, it's all right, I like what he's saying, but that's not what I came to ask. You know me, I do my job. Yes. I have a question. How do you think you know when you have telepathic communication? First of all, I want you to know what telepathy is, right? And you've probably done it. Meaning, have you ever um, thought about a friend and then they called you? Right. Or thought about somebody you ain't seen in a while and talk, went, and turned the corner and bump into them? Yeah. That's telepathic communication. You made a contact with them from mind to mind. That's all it is. Now, at one time, you was able to do that at will until your barrister exam was taken away by Nagao and them. And you can get it back, but you got to be worthy. So telepathic communication just means people communicating from mind to mind. I say it's a telephone call to Papa. 